Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I know I saw a few a few of you saw the uh, the new movie Interstellar by Christopher Nolan uh, with me on Friday, and uh, I know a lot of you are probably waiting for like a comment or a status on how I thought of the movie, um, and I kind of wanted to try something different and do kind of a formal, more formal video review, um, but this is all my own personal opinion, so it's not actually a real formal thing. I just want to get some of uh, what I thought about the film out and see what you guys think and uh, how you guys uh, like this video. So, um, before I really get into depth with the film, I just want to say if you haven't seen this movie yet, you need to go see it um, in theaters. This is not like a movie where I would normally just say, oh, it's a one night rental or oh, you can wait till it comes out on DVD. No, you need to go and see this while it's in theaters. It is, it is that good. It is, if you're a, a film fanatic or you're a huge fan of going to the movies or if you're like me and you study film, you need to go and see this movie because I think it will be talked about for a long time. And if you didn't see it in the theaters, you will probably be kicking yourself later. So I, I really do think you need to see this movie. Um, and it was a great film. And that being said, uh, I'm going to warn you, we're, I'm going to start talking about some stuff that will spoil it for you. And if you haven't seen it, you're going to want to pause this video right now and go over to the nearest movie theater and just, just buy a ticket and watch it. You'll, you won't regret it. I, I, I so promise moving you that. forward, like I said, we're going to get into some depth with the film. Um, we're going to start off, I'll start off talking about, you know, the plot. Um, so it's based around, um, if you've seen it, it's based around the Earth is basically coming to an end, and the main character played by Matthew McConaughey, his name's Cooper, is was a former NASA pilot, now a farmer, and they're trying to find a way to get everybody off the Earth because it will no longer be habitable in uh, a short amount of time. Um, in ranking it among space epics and movies in general, I think it, it is comparable, very comparable to 2001: A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick, um, and one of the great films. It took a lot of ideas from that movie, which is another movie I would highly recommend but you watch. But that being said, um, it does take a lot of movie, or images from 2001 and Space Odyssey. Um, in ranking it among Christopher Nolan's films, I would put it at a solid fourth or fifth behind, and in, and in, this, in this order, behind The Prestige, Memento, and, the, and Batman Begins. Um, it's got a little bit more lighthearted feel than any of his movies, but it's still a classic Chris Nolan film in the sense that it's going to make you think when you go to it, which I love. I love it when, when, when filmmakers make their audiences think about what's going on and not just sit there mindlessly watching either action or violence, which I don't have a problem with doing once in a great while, but I, I love thinking about movies while they're going on and how they're going to end and what they mean. Um, and that being said, some of the themes of this movie I agreed with and actually loved that they touched upon. And uh, some of the themes were early on that um, they were talking about um, with the blight and the corn dying and the earth kind of dying that maybe human need, humanity needs to start getting back into exploring. And the next frontier, of course, is space because we've, we've been to just about everywhere except for maybe the deepest depths of the ocean on this planet that the planet has to offer. I know we get into a whole debate about this, but I really like that it touched on the fact that, you know, it's good to save the planet, but we were also meant to leave the planet, and I kind of connected with that. Um, it also came up with the uh, some of the other themes that it touched upon was uh, love and how it can transcend um, sort of physical space and time. Uh, I don't know how I felt about that one yet, but that was one of the themes. Um, another theme was trying to keep the movie, and I guess this isn't really much of a theme, but it's more of it, it tried to keep the movie realistic in terms of the theory in space, which I loved. When, when you first watch this movie, you'll notice it too, and hopefully you'll be paying attention, but um, the first scene when they go outside of the spaceship um, and they're trying to connect with the command module, um, there is no sound as if it were in space. Um, there, You won't hear anything. It'll be completely silent in the theater. I loved it. I have been waiting for a very long time for a realistic space movie um, that sort of had the balls to say, well, we're not doing explosions in space. Um, we're going to keep the physics of it as real as we can. But with that in mind, although I love the fact that it was 
like more realistic. You also have to keep in mind it's still a science fiction movie. They did break some rules. They you know they'll have fire in space and um, the way they went into the they go into the black hole isn't quite realistic enough for me to buy it. But they did take some liberties. But in, in all, I think it was a good choice that they kept it sort of more grounded in uh, a realistic sense. One of the major criticisms I think I have with this film is it didn't connect with me emotionally like a movie such as maybe Schindler's List would have or even some of Christopher Nolan's other films um, like uh, The Dark Knight or, or Batman Begins even. It just, it seemed a little cold and there were some points where it does try to make you connect with it. Maybe it did with some other people. I don't know if maybe I had this on, if you had the same problem too. But um, they they were kind of just cold and calculating. Um, there was a scene when they come back from a planet, and uh, due to the relativity of it, um, the 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 characters had only been on the planet for about two hours, and the rest of the universe kind of went on for another twenty two years in Earth time. And they come back to find that their their family is twenty two years older, and thinking that they're dead which is great, it is an awesome concept, um, but the scene where you know Matthew McConaughey loses it and he sees his daughter and his kid grow up and then his, his father-in-law dies and he kind of loses it because he's missed so much time with his family is also like, I think Matthew McConaughey did the best he could but the directing may have not been there or you know, I just, I, I, I was really close to you know, coming up in tears but I just wasn't there and another thing that kind of had me throughout the film was the fact that uh, it just didn't, it just seemed to be like, you know, you want to keep your, your plot not so complex that you can't relate to your characters, and it kind of kept bumping into it. Um, and I know Christopher Nolan is famous for having complex plots, and I love that about him. I love, like, the whole movie aspect of anything, but, like, in this film, he kind of loses, like, why do I care about these characters just a little bit um, I, I kind of stopped caring a little bit about Matthew McConaughey's struggles the only part I, I really was in the beginning I was like yeah I kind of care about how humanity needs to get out of Earth because you know I am human and I don't want to see humanity go extinct <laughs> but I didn't really find very much to relate with with any of the characters really there was a scene in there where Anne Hathaway has a dialogue about her love, who's on one of these planets that she wants to go and see, but is afraid is dead, and I'm, she was in tears, and I saw a few people in the theaters kind of, you know, yeah, you know, they were, they were crying. I just, I just didn't connect. Maybe it was me, but uh, maybe that's just more me nitpicking the film too. It did have some some really good intense moments where you're sitting there and your heart was pounding. Um, one of the things I loved about the movie, switching back to the positive, was that, uh, and if you haven't seen this, spoiler, but uh, Matt Damon comes up, and it was totally unexpected because his names aren't mentioned in any of the credits if you go out there and see them. He doesn't really have a big role in it, but he comes up as Dr. Man, the, the guy who, just, who found these new planets that hopefully will save Earth. And he ends up being sort of the antagonist of the film, which I love, because in Matt Damon it seemed to be typecast as the heroic hero style, you know, hero of the film. And it just sort of shows that, uh, you know, Chris Nolan was like, what if I put him as sort of the antagonist? And he goes over and he tries to kill Cooper or Matthew McConaughey, and he ends up blowing up one of the scientists, and then he... The heart, one of the most heart-pounding scenes I had in the movie when he tries to steal the spaceship... He's trying to connect the, the two doors in space, and the locks won't lock on, and he opens the door and the whole spaceship blows up, and the whole time, right beforehand, your suspense is going through your heart, going, don't do it, man, don't do it. Uh, that was brilliant. Um, it is definitely, in, in, in the imagery, it is definitely a Nolan film. He does a beautiful job of using the 70 millimeter IMAX camera and getting those great panoramic space shots. They were gorgeous. I mean, absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Um, the, some of the stuff that still sticks with me that I love are, you know, the passes when they went back by the the black hole. Uh, I loved the passes with the black hole. The the passes with um this with Saturn. 
Saturn was a great, um, you know, just fly by with that. Um, you know, they're just, you know, space was one of the great things Christopher Nolan got to shoot. Um, I mean, granted, he didn't really go to space, but, you know, it was just kind of fun to see all these great, you know, almost artistic, they were artistic shots, so it was just great to see that in 70 millimeter on the big screen, which is why I recommend you go see it, because uh, it should be on the big screen. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen this, I would say go and see it. If you have seen it, uh, you should comment below. I think, uh, let me know how you felt about the movie. Was it good? Was it bad? How did you take it? Um, if you want me, this is kind of fun. Uh, if you want me to maybe view a movie that you liked, if you really liked this video, um, and I can view a movie that you've sort of uh, done or seen. I, I'll watch it, think about it for a couple days, and then uh, maybe I'll get back to you and do a, a movie review based on that movie as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, just uh, let me know how you feel, and uh, thanks for watching.